embroidered or printed patch has come in and out of fashion for decades. Long ago, patches were just a frugal way to extend the life of worn clothing that might have holes or tears. I know my mom sewed a dozen patches on my jeans when I was a kid. At the time, they weren't necessarily cool, but now patches are everywhere from jeans to bags and jackets and even on the runway. In fact, for the past several decades, they've come to symbolize many different things to different people. If you do a search for vintage patches, you'll see that these small fashion icons have not only held up, but there's still a demand for them. Patches are also very common in the military, the girl or boy scouts, and various camps. Similar to a logo, a patch can identify the wearer, their achievements, or something that they're passionate about. A patch can serve to unite members of a club, such as art club or archery club, or it can just make a visual representation of a personal passion. A distinctive iron-on patch is easily made using a linoleum block, acrylic paint, and ink pencils, or permanent markers. Obviously, the first thing we'll need when designing a patch is a design or a logo. It can be sketched out um, on paper and transferred to our printing plate using transfer paper. The material I have here, this is called Speedy Cut. It's made by Speedball. This plate is very easy to cut and will work great if each student is making their own print. However, if a lot of prints are going to be made from the same piece of linoleum, I would suggest using a similar product, also by Speedball, called Speedy Carve. It's a little bit more expensive, but it holds up when doing a larger run of prints. So in either case, the design could be drawn on in pencil onto the block or transferred. Just remember that any numbers or letters should be drawn backwards. So the Sorrel red transfer paper will work really well on this pink Speedy Carve, and just a regular graphite works best on the blue Speedy Cut. So using linoleum cutters, we're going to cut the parts of the block away that will not be printed. I like to ink the areas um, of my design with a black marker just to let, sort of help me visualize what not to cut away um, so that I know what's going to be printing. So I have inked up these letters for the word art and I'm just going to carve around them because I do want those to print. So I've got a simple acrylic sheet here that I'm just going to squeeze my paint out on. So I'm just, I like to just squeeze a little thin line across the top. This is Blick Studio Acrylic. Um, and then I'm just going to pull it down. This is a soft rubber brayer. Pulling it down and I want to go across the plate and get a nice even coat on my brayer. I don't usually find it necessary to add any kind of water. Um, if you need a little, I would just spritz it on with a spritzer. Just, you know, you want it to dry quickly and you really don't need to soup it up. So I've got a nice even layer on my brayer and I'm just going to ink my plate. I want to go both ways across. And then I'm just using a simple muslin here today for my fabric. Um, it's very inexpensive and since we'll be adding some heat and bond, um, it will make a nice sturdy patch with the addition of that on the back of it. Some patches I used um, the rock ion cloth and it's a much thicker fabric, it's pure white. This would be a great option for things like backpacks or bags that could be spot cleaned instead of laundered. So I'm going to just place this fabric, the muslin, just right on top of my block. And I'm using a plain old baron. This is just a bamboo baron. You could use your hands, you could use the back of a spoon. And I like the muslin because I can see that my paint is getting absorbed and I can see where I've got a good transfer and a good print there. So then I'm just going to peel this back from the plate to reveal my print. And once this dries, which is usually pretty quickly, we get to add some bright color to it. I've got one here that's completely dry. I'm going to use some ink tense pencils. I like these pencils to add color because they're really easy to handle. I can just kind of use them like a colored pencil here. So on my artist palette logo, I wanted each of these letters to be in their own color of their own color of paint. Ink tense um, also makes a bar form of these pigments, which could be which could be nice if you're doing a larger area. I find that I just need I like the pencils for the added control on this project. So water intensifies the color of these pencils. I'm just going to use a slightly damp brush. 
look at that, just a tiny bit of water really makes that red pop. It all just gets real intense. If you're gonna be laundering your patch, if you're gonna put it on clothing, you want to mix your water with golden fabric medium in a one-to-one -one ratio, and then iron that piece of clothing for three minutes. Permanent fabric markers would be another easy way to add color. To iron your patch on, just follow the instructions on the Heat and Bond Ultra Hold packaging. Try creating a simple iron-on patch to reflect your interests or passions. If you'd like a complete materials list for this project, along with many others, please visit dickblick.com.